The patellofemoral joint is the joint between the kneecap and the leg, and when this joint becomes irritated, it gives us some generalized pain at the front of the knee, which is worse with activities like squatting and going up and down stairs. In this video, we'll talk about what causes patellofemoral pain syndrome and then some rehab exercises that could be helpful. Weakness of the quadriceps and of the glutes are typically tied to patellofemoral pain syndrome, but we run into a chicken or the egg scenario here. Did the weakness exist before the pain, or did the pain lead to the weakness? For the quads, it does appear that weakness exists before the development of patellofemoral pain syndrome, but there is a caveat here. There's a portion of the quads called the VMO, which is on the inside part of the knee, and it was originally thought that this was one of the drivers of patellofemoral pain syndrome. However, what we see is that the strength and the timing of the contraction of that muscle is actually quite variable in those with patellofemoral pain syndrome. So when we look at weakness, yes, there's weakness of the quads in general, but for the VMO specifically, not so much. And then for the glutes, it doesn't appear that glute weakness is predictive of those who will go on to develop patellofemoral pain syndrome. However, we do see that those with patellofemoral pain syndrome have glute weakness. So it appears that the reduced strength is actually more to do with the presence of pain than it has to do with weakness causing the pain in the first place. The angle of the knee and knee valgus are two other concerns when it comes to patellofemoral pain syndrome. But again, neither of these seem to be predictive of those who go on to develop patellofemoral pain syndrome. So even though the structure of the knee or the pelvis are common reasons given for the development of patellofemoral pain syndrome, it doesn't appear that that's the case. And then pronation of the feet follows a similar trend. Whether somebody has a flat foot or pronates a lot while they run, neither of these seem to be associated with patellofemoral pain syndrome. All of this leading to patellofemoral pain syndrome being an overload issue as opposed to a structural issue with the main takeaway being that there's increased load at the patellofemoral joint with insufficient rest, and that's leading to the development of pain. For the rehab of patellofemoral pain syndrome, the combination of glute and quad strengthening seems to provide the most benefit, with the goal of rehab to obviously restore the strength of the glutes and the quads, but also to increase the tolerance at the patellofemoral joint to compression with knee flexion. Isometric exercises are a helpful place to start because we have a lot of control over how much knee flexion we're loading in, and there's a variety of different ways that we can do this. One example is a standing knee extension using an exercise band, and depending on the tolerance, start with the knee relatively straight and then hold this position for 30 to 45 seconds, and then we can progress to various degrees of knee flexion as we build up more tolerance. Wall sits are another popular option, again starting with the knee relatively straight and then gradually holding into more knee flexion. The nice thing about wall sits is that they transition well into a split squat isometric and then repeating that same progression of gradually increasing the amount of knee flexion that we're loading in. Once able to tolerate loading through the full range of motion at the knee, then we can progress to some isotonics to start adding some movement at the knee, and we can either progress those knee extension exercises or the split squat exercises to do this. For the knee extensions, the goal is to gradually load into more knee flexion. Initially, it might not be tolerated, so working through the range of motion that is tolerated and gradually build up from there. The key here is to perform the knee extension slowly against the resistance. With the split squat, starting with the feet further apart helps to limit the amount of knee flexion then gradually bringing the feet closer together, which will increase the amount of compression at the knee. Another thing that we can add is an exercise band anchored to the side. When we are moving, the band will try to pull the knee towards midline, so the goal is to push the knee out against the band, engaging the glute and helping to improve the tolerance of the patellofemoral joint. For glute strengthening exercises, we have a lot of options available to us because we can load the glutes without much movement at the knee, which means that a lot of exercises are gonna be well tolerated. Glute bridges are a great starting place. Adding an exercise band around the knees increases the engagement of the glutes, so push out against the exercise band and then slowly lift the hips off of the ground and then slowly back down to the ground. A side-lying hip raise is another great option. With the knees stacked and the elbow under the shoulder, lift the hips up off the ground again, and then slowly back to the ground. With all of these exercises, we wanna perform them slowly to increase the time under load. These exercises can also be progressed as something in a standing position. A lateral step with an exercise band is one option. The band can either be placed above the knee, at the ankles, or around the feet, with each being more challenging. These are also performed in a little bit of knee flexion, so we are building that tolerance to compression again. And then finally at the end, we want to add squats back in, not only because it'll help to strengthen the quads and the glutes, but because it was the original exercise that was provocative, so we want to make sure that we can tolerate it. 
Initially, we might need to use a box squat just to limit the amount of range of motion that we're going into, but eventually just doing a full body weight squat through that full range of motion.